Eagles second game of preseason is just around the corner and it's safe to say there is plenty of intrigue surrounding the team but more specifically the linebacker spot. Camu Grugia Hill has a grade 3 MCL sprain and Paul Warrillow is still battling his ACL recovery which means there is a huge window of opportunity for a linebacker to step up. Last Thursday, that linebacker just so happened to be LJ4, one of the team's free agent additions who went on to amass four tackles against the Titans, but I think his game showed much more promise than what the box score suggests. My name is Liam Jenkins and this is another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started though guys, make sure you leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you're new around here and don't forget to drop your opinions on today's video below in the comments. And for your daily dose of Philadelphia sports content, head to phillysportsnetwork.com for content from myself and all of our writers. And on one more note, just before we crack into the film, don't forget that this Thursday starting at 6.30, we will be hosting a live watch along of the Eagles vs Jaguars preseason matchup. We'll have live commentary, analysis, giveaways and so much more. We had 10,000 of you tune in last week. We hope to see just as many show their face in the chat this week. So be a part of our community, come and say hello and watch the Eagles vs Jaguars with us. Let's start off with something that jumps straight off the screen, and that is that LJ4 is absolutely rapid. Now, he looked quick during his time at Pittsburgh, but he somehow looks even quicker against the Titans. Look at the way he diagnoses this run outside and crashes down, shedding the block with ease. Fort does actually remind me in many ways of Camu Grugier Hill, someone who honed their craft on special teams, and when flashing on defense, mainly it's because of that sheer speed. Like, look at that again, another near tackle for a loss opportunity. He gets shoved out of the way by Taylor Lewan, but look at his eyes he stays in the backfield clicks and closes nicely already taking that outside angle forcing the running back to cut inside and that's just enough for his teammates to come in and clean up the job it sounds simple but speed is so so valuable in today's league when you look at how teams are constantly trying to get skill position players in space but this is a prime example now Fort doesn't make a play here he gets chip blocked gets up and misses a tackle but watch the amount of recovery hustle he has here to get back down the field get in a position to make a play number 58 here he's ready if he has to loop over the top and bring down the running back that's a great play by LG Fort, great speed and that's what you want from a starting middle linebacker these days now is Fort going to start I don't know but he picks up the jailbreak screen there stops drops and rolls very good tackling technique when he has the angle and that again is something that's going to be fundamental to his chances of making this team back onto run defense he diagnoses well rips through a block and joins the pile something nice and simple but that run defense efficiency is going to reward him very well over the next few weeks now here you can see he's pointed something out to Alex Singleton there's no safety over the top so he's probably putting him on a curl and flat assignment watch the speed Fort generates by getting into the backfield here he's straight through pushes through the right guard and puts him on his knees not only is that strength it's explosiveness and if you're going to use him as a blitzer that's what you want to see and bizarrely enough as the game went on the Eagles really started to use LJ4 a little bit more down as a situational pass rusher here's that play again it's third and three cover zero if someone's going to get to the quarterback it has to be quick because they're going to be vulnerable in the middle of the field but look at the get off he anticipates a snap count well gets his hands into the chest of the right guard and just bulldozes him all the way into the path of the quarterback that is an explosive play from the former Steelers linebacker and it's plays like that that will get him game time that will get him snaps as preseason continues and it's something he's gonna take advantage of as I mentioned a moment ago this did become a regular thing throughout the game Fort was assigned those blitz package situations you see another example here straight into the backfield crashes the gap he's assigned to nice and simple he doesn't make the play but he does the next best thing here we are on fourth and 11 another example of blitz speed here straight up the middle he's trying to get pressure into the quarterback forces him to scramble it should be a sack ideally but it's the next best thing which is of course a turnover on down the defensive line did a great job of clearing his path he went completely unaccounted for and i would have liked to see him pick up a sack there but it's certainly not the end of the world when you are able to generate that turnover on downs but look at this it's third and two and what we're going to see here is just tremendous block shedding technique it's his hips and shoulders square and then finds the running back and is able to bring him down short of the sticks for yet another big play it's third and short Fort has to be at his reactionary best here sheds that block with just tremendous easy swims over the top and then immediately 
finds the ball. Fort really does have a sixth sense for where the ball is going to be. He's lined up in man coverage here over the running back, but the way he's able to sift through traffic and bring down the rusher for a tackle for a loss is just astounding, even if it is pre-season play. Look at the eyes staying constantly in the backfield, takes a great angle and forces him just out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. It's a great play, but it's that instinct and the play speed that his mind doesn't get ahead of his feet or vice versa. It's so well balanced, but it's so dangerous when quick. And that's why the Steelers had him lined up over tight ends in portions last season. There were a couple games he got significant snap time in. When you can keep your eyes glued in the backfield, stay on the ball, sift through traffic, and then take an angle that strong, striding towards the running back, and there was just no way the number 30 was getting anywhere near open space. He flows really well to the ball. There's another example of that here. You see how the Titans are all bunched up. Look at the way that Fort is going to keep his eyes pressed into that backfield and just follows the flow of traffic really well. Gets off one block. Now here, I would have liked to have seen Alex Singleton take the outside. That's where he should be ideally. Fort shouldn't be having to make this sort of tackle. He leaps out. He can't make it anyway. That's where Alex Singleton should be. Unfortunately, he wasn't. There was some yardage picked up. And that speed is a lifesaver. The play action pass here is going to target Adam Humphreys, who bursts out of that pack. And it's LJ4 out of position who picks him up and brings him down. Now, the sticks do move, but look at the way Fort is clinging onto the ball. He's already trying to strip that free. This was a mismatch on paper. He shouldn't have been in that position. Fort bails out, is able to stick with him because of that speed, and then still try and rip that ball out. And then came, of course, the big play. He's going to drop back into coverage here. There are two crossing routes underneath, and Fort delivers one of the biggest hits we've seen in the last year or so. And it's all legal, and that all comes down to technique. And if you slow this down and have a look at those fundamentals, it's absolutely brilliant to watch. Now, the quarterback throws it. It's a great strike from Ryan Tannehill. But at this point, Fort leads with his inside shoulder, leads with that inside foot. His head is out of the play. And that's what keeps it legal. And in a league that is so focused on safety, you're seeing a lot of these penalties now. Fort is doing a great job of keeping himself out of harm's way. Now, on the surface here, it looks like he actually gave up a touchdown. But when you look back at it, I don't think he did. Gives Fort close to a perfect game, in my opinion. Now, if you watch back here, it's Jonathan Sitt who seems to be out of position. I think the Eagles are playing a cover one thief, or so it looks like. Fort drops back to the middle third. Cyprian should be way deeper, and he's just not. It looks like a miscommunication or a missed assignment on the other side of the field. The safety came down. Maybe that's me misinterpreting this. If there's someone that reads it a bit differently, without the All-22, it really is hard to say. But I'd love for you to drop that in the comments, because I don't think this is on LJ4. He's dropping back into his zone as he should, but at that point, the safety's got to be deeper if it is a robber situation, which I think it was. But again, I may be wrong. It may have just been a cover two man either way i think lj fort had a fantastic game and like mentioned at the start of the video this is a real big opportunity for him to assert himself as a potential starting middle linebacker or at least a backup to zach brown Camus going to be out for a few weeks we know what the situation is with paul warlow the eagles are light on depth and i think this could be the best of the bunch situation here for lj fort but let me know guys down in the comments what do you think of lj fort is he going to be a firm fixture on this eagles defense is his ceiling on special teams? Let me know. From myself, Liam Jenkins, I'll see you soon for another episode of Eagles Film Room. And don't forget our live stream coming up on Thursday at 6.30. I hope to see you there.